PC Gamer this weekend was thinking about things to save for future generations. Okay. Uh, obviously not theme park rides, but they were thinking about what games would you put into a time capsule for future generation for future generations? You can only choose one. I hate that you can only choose one. That's very stressful. But they consulted both the PC Gamer staff and some of the people on their forums, uh, and they put together a list of some people's uh, suggestions of what they would put in if it was up to them. And I think it's a very interesting list. The first one they jokingly reference is had a full boyfriend. That would be um, a terrifyingly accurate view of our society uh, and how bad we are. But these are interesting choices. You know, obviously, obviously, I don't agree with all of them, mm -hmm. but I do think they're fascinating. You know, the first one is Dwarf Fortress, which makes a lot of sense because you can it can represent all the early roguelikes like your like your zit and your actual rogue and like all that stuff. Uh, but have that sort of like that new procedural generative stuff that we expect from games now. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's interesting. The Witcher 3. Yeah, absolutely. Really? Yeah, I think The Witcher 3 is a brilliant game. Uh, it, it, I, I consider Witcher 3 to have been really interesting and groundbreaking. I have played a good bit of it, and I will never finish it because there is so much game there. Yeah. But it, it, The Witcher 3 was an incredible feat in storytelling, um, and I'm, I'm totally in favor of that. Interesting. I know it's, I'm. I know I'm sort of. I know I'm sort of an outlier when I say that. The, like The Witcher Three. Like we've talked about this. Yeah. It didn't grab me. It's too open worldy. Um, the Sims is a great one. The Sims is an excellent one. That's a great choice. Absolutely. That's such a fast because The Sims is such a. Mm -hmm. It was such a crossover success. Mm -hmm. uh, like everybody has played The Sims. Yeah. Everybody enjoys The Sims. Mm -hmm. And it's also like if you're leaving this for future generations. It's a wild simulacrum of what life is today. Yeah, it's definitely a strange portrait of human life in, in our time. Um, and it depends on which one, too, because it's like, well, do you leave a modern Sims? Do you leave the first Sims? I would go for the Sims 4 and be like, you know, let's yeah. leave it as modern as possible. But put in all of the plug-in packs and stuff. Yeah, all Put in of all it. the weird shit. All the magic and the Star Wars. Um, the new Diabolic mentions GTA 5, which is interesting because that was their next choice. Um, I think... Yes, absolutely, GTA 5. I don't like it. You don't I like don't GTA like 5 or you don't like it as a choice? No, I like GTA 5. I don't like it as a choice. See, I think it's I think it's great because number it's it's the biggest game in the world right yes. now. Yes. And has been the biggest game in the world for two, three years. Yes. Uh, Longer. That game's been out for so long. It's been out for so long. I mean, it dipped. Yeah, it dipped out of popularity and then came back when, mm -hmm. when online started getting huge. I do think that there will be... There's an issue in that future generations will not be able to take, take, uh, they won't be able to take advantage of the online. Yeah, sure. Which is why the game is number one. Right, again. it's been out since 2013. Woof, woof. Still kicking, still charging you 60 bucks. But I think that's great because it's it's a technologically advanced open world game. It is. It's, it's so representative of what games are uh, and especially were it, it like super were in 2013. Yeah. Um, I just I th I think it's great. It's not my favorite, and I would not want I would not want to leave it for anyone to play. But right. I think as a as a relic, and as a this is what games were. It makes so much sense. I think sense. I would just be so embarrassed that this is what games were. As someone who's actively played GTA V a good bit, I've played through the campaign more than once. It's a fun game. I'm just like it. Here you have the Sims that are like, here, you just control a family, whatever. And if you don't know what our society was like at mm -hmm. all, right? You just have this and it is in a time capsule and you don't know what things are like. And then you play GTA V, which is a realistic map of Los Angeles. Yeah. And, you know, realistic looking characters that are taking place in a, a non-magical, non-fictional world. And, yeah. you know, it, it, as it looks. I don't want them to think that's what life was like here. That's true. That's disturbing to me on a deeper level of them thinking that this is what Los Angeles was like in 2013. I know, I know, but it's, hmm, hmm, but it's sort of, but it's sort of, it, it sort of is a, ooh, it's a, it's a gross and grimy little mirror on society, isn't it? Ooh, ooh, GTA 5. Ooh, Splunky 2, Splunky 2 goes everywhere. Now here's my thing. I'm a big fan of Splunky 2. Uh-huh. 
But I think you do Dwarf Fortress. Well, you could do Dwarf Fortress and mm-hmm. Spelunky too, but you'd have to really make a case for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I get that. You, like, because if I'm putting a platformer in and I want a roguelike in, mm-hmm. she, I mean, for platformer, I would put in something like a like a Super Mario Brothers 3 if mm-hmm. I'm doing like an old school 2D platformer. Yeah. Uh, and then I would put in Dwarf Fortress for the roguelike. Now, Emma Matthews, whose pick this was, said uh, they just really want future generations to know how equally brilliant and punishing a game can be um, mm-hmm. and that they wanted to leave something in the future that they find is difficult to get sick of. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's true. That it has a lot of replay and, and, and easy kind of like long hours. I do like this this next one where they toss, uh, this guy, Morgan or Morgan Park says, I want to toss in Snow Runner. Um, and I think this is, this is fascinating for the reasoning. Uh, it's... It's this genre that they're calling blue collar games, and it's stuff like Snow Runner, Euro Truck Simulator, Hard Space Shipbreaker, like that sort of thing where it's like, like it's like it's like it's work, like it's blue collar work simulated. And that made me think about like, could you do could you do a game's time capsule without including like Big Buck Hunter? If you really wanted to show what games were like and what people were playing. Could you do it without like Big Buck Hunter or Mm -hmm. Golden Tee? Like these bar games that we probably don't think about very much, but everybody plays Big Buck Hunter. Like everybody, like you've, everybody's gone into a bar and has thrown a dollar into Big Buck Hunter. I have never. What? I have never. I think you're a liar. That's incorrect. I think you've lied to me. The next game on the list is the first thing that came to mind for me, which is Portal. I think I would have chosen Portal 2 because I think Portal 2 is just a better game, but both games are phenomenal and you can't go wrong with Portal. But definitely, like, when I read the title, the first thing that came to mind for me, and I don't even entirely know why, but was Portal. I mean, Portal Portal is a, is one of those defining moments in narrative, and it's mm-hmm. also a defining moment in uh, mechanics. So it makes a lot of sense. Portal 2 is the better game. Yeah. But I think if you were... I if think you're if you're only leaving, leaving one, it makes sense yeah. to leave the first game. I think without the without the first one. Uh, forum users said Wolfenstein 3D. Mm. I would say Doom. Yeah. I'd skip Wolfenstein and I'd, I'd go straight to Doom. Same. Agreed. If you're going to put the early FPS to show, I, it would have to be Doom. Um, EverQuest or Elite Dangerous. Now, the trouble with these are their MMOs. Yeah. That's tricky. Yeah. The next person said Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, but they said it as a is pretty much describing. Maybe I will sign up. Maybe this is the, I'll get the best of PC gamer. In uh, I would not leave Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven because I would like them to understand that our technology at this time was actually better than that. Uh, you know, nobody needs to look at games and be like, "Wow, people really just t posing and floating on away." Like we were we were doing better than that at this time. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, they they said it as a joke is like that pretty much describes how the world is today. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Uh, we've got some stuff that's like uh, the Unity adaptation of Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall. Mm-hmm. Um, and Elder Scrolls would be an interesting choice for yeah. another world. Skyrim. Skyrim would be a very Skyrim. interesting choice. I would put Skyrim over The Witcher 3, but The Witcher 3 is so much more technologically advanced mm-hmm. and is one of the best games, in my opinion, of the last 10 years. But Skyrim is one of my favorite games of all time. I think Mario 64 has to go in So that's there. what I said. I said Mario 64. Did nobody pick a Mario game? Nobody picked Not a Mario game. Not one Mario game. game. I that's just think that wild. Mario as a character is so iconic that if you wanted to leave something that explained gaming history, to leave Mario out of it, to leave Zelda out of it, This is like a forest for the Pokemon? trees thing. Where these people are like, these, like, these gamers are so gamer. Uh, you know what I mean? That they're thinking yeah. about... Uh, they're thinking about like, oh, what's the most representative of games? And it's like, my guys, pull back, take a look at the, take a look at the whole forest, get right? the ten thousand foot view. I just feel like Nintendo's getting snubbed on Nintendo's this list. Nintendo's getting real snubbed. I think it's terribly unfortunate. I think that Nintendo has made so many defining moments. And like, I'm a Nintendo fangirl. Most of my favorite games are Nintendo games. But like, I also think Animal Crossing would be an interesting pick. Animal Crossing would be fascinating. I think Animal Crossing would be fascinating because it shows such a different side of gaming. You know, I'm it's shocked not that all no, cyberpunks and Skyrims. I'm shocked that there wasn't a Final Fantasy on here, particularly yeah, Seven. You'd right. think that would have made it. Um, this site is PC Gamer. This was a pick from both PC Gamer employees and their forums. Uh, Minecraft, I think, would have to go in there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, there weren't a lot of like those kind of like free world creatives. Um, so yeah, I would say. Mario 64 without a question if you're putting a Mario game in and mm-hmm. you should put a Mario game in because and Mario 64 was defining to 
to the technology at the time of, of these 3D games. Um, so obviously that, I think Animal Crossing would be an interesting pick. And I think you'd have to put a Zelda. And I think if I was gonna put a Zelda, I might put Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild. But, but I wonder if Breath of the Wild isn't too much of a crossover with some other open world stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I would say... Possibly, it might be more similar. Yeah, I, would, I mean, oh, Zelda's tough because like, and my, my gut tells me mm -hmm. that the most represent, like, cause... Ocarina of Time. Uh, mm, I mean, Ocarina of Time, like one of my least favorite Zelda games, but probably the one that most people think of and the mm -hmm. most representational of the series. Yeah. Most representational of the early series, I think, I think you put Link to the Past in as opposed to any of the original ones. Yeah. It's tricky though. A Breath of the Wild is such a good game, but it's such its own thing. It was such yeah. a it was such a departure for Zelda, even though mm -hmm. it wasn't like Yeah, I it's get very that. it's very unique, but I think it it would occupy a weird space in the time capsule. It would, because Zelda in itself is not like a defining genre. It's a defining fandom. It's a design it's a defining um story mm -hmm. and a part of culture. Jester Jasper uh, is taking taking one from the team and speaking truth. A uh, Call of Duty in Fortnite, like you have to. Yeah. There has to be a Call of Duty in there. Maybe a Halo. Like what? I would say Call of Duty Black Ops. If I was going to put a Call of Duty, Black in there, Ops for sure. It would be Black Ops. Black Ops that for was, sure. I think the most defining of Call of Duty. Uh, Fortnite would be hard again because it's an MMO. Yeah, like how would they play it? That's right. the thing that's tricky. How would they play it? I mean, I think for some of these like MMOs. You don't leave the game. You'd have to leave. You'd have to leave a let's play. Yeah, you'd and have to find a let's like, play and like like leave it in there. And if we're talking about What's categories, up, future generations, smash that time capsule. Today we're gonna play three hours. That's what you would have to do. You would have to do. You would that. have to do it. You would have to. You would have to. That's the only way. Fascinating. Interesting take on it. I think that if you put one battle royale, you would cover that genre. That battle royale probably would make sense to be Fortnite, but mm -hmm. it, but it would be tough for for future generations to play. I am not a battle royale person, so I'm like meh. I get it. Call of Duty, some kind of you know, Call of Duty is the defining game of those war soldier, tough guy shooty games. That's yeah. fair. That makes sense. And then it's like, okay, well, what about World of Warcraft? Again, it's an MMO, so you wouldn't have the, the, the same abilities. But really, like you leave World of Warcraft over Fantasy Star Online. <laughs> Shocking, I know. Um, but World of Warcraft was obviously very culture-defining around gaming. Yeah. Um, there, there's such a big list, it would be hard to narrow down. It would. Hey, I got a fun thing that we can do in the Discord. Mm -hmm. Let's all jump in the Discord and make our time capsule. Yeah. Let's everybody pick one game. Yeah and let's see what our list winds up being. I think my contribution is Mario 64. That's good. Because I also think Mario 64 for me personally was the most defining of starting to genuinely care about playing video games. Mm. You know what I would probably throw in there? If, I, if you took Mario 64, mm -hmm. knowing, because now it becomes a strategy game of what do I think other people are going to name? Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> what do I use for my one choice? Yeah, what do you claim? Quick. What do I claim? King's Quest. Fascinating. I'm gonna represent the entire adventure game genre. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna represent all those Sierra games, Lucas Art, like Lucas Arts games. I probably, I like, I could have gone Monkey Island, and I almost did, mm -hmm. but I think it's King's Quest. Yeah. So leave your pick in the Discord. We would love to see them. We'll put together our own little kind of time capsule, and I think that's an interesting thing to keep track of from the community as well, and see how that changes over time. So uh, drop it in the It's Too Early channel if you're not in the Discord. Once again, get in there. What are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, Do it. Uh, get in there. Uh, we would appreciate it. Thanks for watching, you little pickles. That's your official name that we've it's decided not. on. It's 100% canon. And if you want to see is. more It's Too Early, subscribe here for new episodes. And catch us live every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on twitch.tv slash Pixel Circus at 8 a.m. Pacific. Goodbye, little pickles. That's your official That's name. That's not their name. Thank you for watching.